Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. If you guys are new here or you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So today I'm going to go over how I made my intro and my outro for my YouTube videos using Keynote. Um, I did find some videos online on how to do this, but they were missing a few things that I, w I just wasn't sure how to do. So I figured it out on my own and I wanted to make this video so maybe I could help you guys learn how to do this on your own. So I hope I did this. Um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave those down in the comment section and I will try to get to those. And let's get right into the video. So to find the image that I wanted for my intro, I just went on to Google and I searched Makeup Tools PNG, which is PNG is a file that has no background. And I liked this one, so I'm going to go ahead and click View Image, and then from this screen I'm going to Save Image As, and then I'm just putting it into my Intro Outro folder. You could save it to your desktop, it doesn't really matter, just know where you save it so you can go find it. So and now that I have it saved, I'm going to go ahead and X out of these, and I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop. I know you can use other programs, I'm not familiar with them, Photoshop is just what I use. So I'm going to go ahead and open the file that I just saved from my desktop, and I'm going to erase this background because this is not a true PNG file. First of all, I'm going to crop out the image, crop out anything that I don't need, um, right down just to the very edge of the pink splatters. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick the Magic Eraser tool and just click around the brush and the splatters and this is going to get rid of most of the background. I did uh, pull the tolerance down just a little bit. So I'm just kind of clicking around and getting rid of most of the background. Now that I have most of the background taken out, I'm going to switch it to the Background Eraser tool, which is not as precise. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the tolerance down again and just very carefully go around all those splatters to erase that background. This you can just do as much as you want to get as much of the background out as you can. It's kind of a tedious process. You have to be pretty precise. Um, and just go ahead and do this until the whole background is gone. Now I'm just going to zoom back out a little bit. Now I'm going to take the quick selection tool and I'm going to select the makeup brush um, and a little bit right off the edge of the makeup brush into the splattered area. Um, this is just going to, we're going to make another file with this one. So we have two separate files, the brush and the splatter. So you can just kind of select the area that you would like. And then I'm going to go up to uh, refine edge and I'm just going to feather this out a little bit so the edges aren't so harsh. I just want it to blend in really well. So I'm going to go ahead and feather this to right about here. And then you go ahead and click OK. And then you're going to Command J on a Mac, and this is going to create a new layer, so you kind of have two separate layers here. So once you do that, you're going to see over here, layer one has popped up, and you can uh, shut off the background layer, and you can see that now you have two layers. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that, duplicate that layer to a new file. I'm just naming it Pink Brush, so here it is right here, just the brush and a little bit of the splatter. Now back on the original image you have these two files. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the top layer and on the bottom layer I'm going to select, you want to make sure the bottom layer is selected. I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing and feather it out as I did with the last file and then I'm going to, I believe it was Command X and delete the makeup brush altogether. And then I'm going to save this file as a uh, like pink splatter I believe and or pink powder and I'm saving it as a PNG that means there's not going to be any background with it so let's go ahead and save that I'm canceling because it's already saved but then we're going to go to the pink makeup brush and we're going to save that as well as a PNG file and we're just going to name this one pink brush and go ahead and save it in the same area so you have two different files you have the brush and you have the splatter so now that those are saved, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open Keynote. Now this is uh, where you're going to click New Document. We want it into a wide um, screen and we're just going to click the white one to start this Keynote presentation. On here, you're just going to click these and delete and that's going to get rid of those for you. Now to add those images in, I'm just going to go to where I saved them and you're going to click and drag them onto the screen. So both of those files, I'm just clicking and dragging into Keynote. 
And on Keynote, they have like snap to guides to where um, you can, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to zoom this out so you guys can see the edges of the screen. But they have snap to guides to where when you put a file somewhere, another one's going to kind of snap to the area. So to begin with, I need to flip these around because I'd like the brush to be coming from on the left side of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead to arrange and we're going to flip them horizontally. Uh, both these files so that they're on the left side of the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull them over into the corner and you can see that yellow line that shows up. That's just telling you it's in the center. So now that they're both lined up, I'm going to go over to format and then over to arrange and make sure that your constraint proportions is on. That means it's just going to keep it proportioned, but you can make it larger. It's going to keep the right shape. So I'm just going to make those as big as I want them and and then they're going to kind of snap to each other so you're going to make sure they're in the, the right area to where the brush is on top of the splatter in the right way. Now I'm going to go up here to the top and click text and this is where I'm going to put my channel name and I'm just going to go ahead and type that out and highlight it and then I'm going to change the font size and I'm also going to change the font and then just position that where you would like it on the screen. I'm just going to kind of put it almost in the, in the center, um, but up a little bit high. And then I'm going to do another text tool and put the rest of my channel name, highlight that, and then change the font and the font size. Then I'm just going to align them how I would like them on the screen. So now I'm going to animate, build in, and we're going to add an effect to make sure Just Smells is highlighted. Over on the right, you see it says Preview. You can click that on any of these effects to see what that effect is going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and preview Sparkle, and then we'll preview Shimmer. And I like Sparkle, so we're going to go ahead and click on the name Sparkle. Uh, right here where it says left to right, this is um, changing like the direction that the sparkle happens. So you can choose however you want it to to do. Um, you can hit preview here, it's going to show you that. You can switch it top to bottom, so it's going to sparkle from the top to the bottom, obviously. Um, I like just the left to right, so I'm going to click that. And then right here is the duration, how long that's going to, the effect is going to take. Then you're going to go ahead and click your other text and add an effect to that one. Um, and like I said, you can preview any of these and just kind of find the one you like. I actually clicked the wrong one, so you go up here and click change, and then go ahead and click on the one you want, which is drop. But that one took a little too long, so I'm going to change the duration down so it happens a little bit faster, and go ahead and preview that, and that looks good. So now I'm going to click on the brush and the splatter. Um, so for these two, I had two different effects. I want those. That's why I had to separate the files. So for the splatter, um, I want the appear because I want to make it look like the brush is being dropped from above and the powder is like splattering out onto the table. So I kind of had to go through these and decide which one was going to make it look like that and just play with them until I found the right combination. So for the brush, we're going to use, um, where is it? scale big I believe and then for the splatter we're going to use um, iris which makes it kind of look like it's just splattering out so I think it looks pretty cool now we're gonna go down here to where it says build order and this is where you're going to um, decide what happens when so you can hit preview at the bottom and it's going to show you what it's at default um, I would like to put the just mills on after transition and then we're going to try dot com with build one which is going to make it happen at the same time as just mills which I don't like so I'm going to take dot com and I'm going to make it happen after build one so it's going to put just mills on and then drop in dot com which I think that looks pretty cool now with the brush the pink brush is going to fall first so we want it to happen after the dot com so we're going to preview it and see what we've got so far that was happening at the same time which I didn't like so I'm going to take pink brush and I'm going to have to have it happen after build 2 and then the powder we're going to put after build 3. 
So now we have just smells, then dot com drops in, the brush drops in, and the paint or the powder splatters. So now you just have to work kind of with timing and just make everything work how you think it should look. You can also change the, the delay. So like on the powder splatter, um, I'd like it to happen a little bit after, but still with the same build. So you can just change that right here under delay. So now let's preview it again. And my computer is being a little slow, so let's get this to preview. Okay, here we go. So now, right now, this is where we stand. And I think that looks pretty cool, so I'm going to go ahead and X out of that. We're going to go up to File, and I'm going to Export to QuickTime. And here, we're going to change this to 1080p. And then just go ahead and change these to 0 and hit next. Now this is where it's going to ask you what you want to name it. I'm just naming it my intro. And it's going to save to Keynote file. So you can change um, it to save wherever you want. So go ahead and click export. So now while this is creating, I'm going to go back up and click file and save. And this is going to save um, our intro in Keynote. So you can go and edit it anytime you need to. I'm just canceling because I've already saved it. Now I'm going to go into Final Cut Pro and I'm just going to show you what it looks like in here. So to do this and make this little compound clip, I went up to New Project and I'm just making another one for you so you can see the steps. I just named it Intro Test for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to take the clip that we imported, um, this one right here, and we're just going to drag it down into the timeline. And this is where you can add music and that kind of thing. So you can cut it, like there's a big white space at the very beginning, so you can kind of cut that down. And you're going to go over to Effects and you're going to look for Keyer. You're going to um, add that on to this part of the video and that's going to that's what makes it kind of transparent over the top of something so I usually have it over like an image or the beginning of my video but it made the color on the brush really weird so over in color selection I'm not exactly sure what this is but I switched it to manual and I drug the little um, pie over until it was the color I wanted it and just kind of made it look like it was before I'm sorry I don't really know what this is but it made it look right so this is how I did it so now that the colors look right, um, you can kind of cut the clip to where you want it. Um, like I said, there was a bunch of white blank space in the beginning, so I cut that out. And then you can go ahead and add your music and everything in here. So this is my music clip right here. And once you have the music and everything lined up the way you want it, then you're just going to highlight all those pieces and right click and create a compound clip. And that's that part. Now we're going back into Keynote, doing a wide presentation, the white one. This is going to be for our outro. So um, click these and then delete the same way we did before. I'm going to add text um, just like we did before. I'm going to highlight it and change the font and then also change the font size. This one's going to be a little bit bigger because this is for our outro. So um, I'm going to zoom out so you can see. Okay, now that that's all situated, I'm going to go up to, um, we're going to highlight Just Mills and go to Animate. We're going to build an effect on there. And I'm going to use the sparkle again, just like I did with the intro. And same thing on the dot .com, I'm going to use the drop effect. So that's how I'd like that part to be. Um, now I'm going to add the little boxes. We're going to go to the shape and we're going to add a square. And then over on the right, under Format, we're going to go to Arrange. Now here we're going to make it um, 16 wide by 9 high, which I believe is the default for those little videos at the end of our YouTubes. YouTubes, our YouTube videos. Make sure you're constrained, Proportions is on, and then drag this um, pretty big because 
I did this and my boxes were too small and you can resize the videos in your outro on YouTube but you can't go smaller than a certain size so I made them pretty big and I'm just kind of gonna um, make this bigger so you guys can see put this over in the corner and then I'm going to put a border on this and I'm gonna put it at a 10 and then right here you can change the color I'm just gonna pick any color right now I'm gonna go ahead and change the color later but for now we're just gonna use this color I'm gonna put it at a 10 for the border and then we're just going to position it I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and position it over in the corner you don't want to make it too low on this screen because then it will be too low on YouTube and your video won't line up so you want to keep it up off of the bottom edge of this and I'm gonna copy it and duplicate it over onto this side and then that yellow lines just making it so I know that they're in the same they're at the same height. So now I'm going to add some social media icons and these are just some that I saved online and they're pink. This is why I chose any color for the border because I'm going to make the border the same as these. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these on there and then go to format and to arrange. We're going to make sure constrained proportions is on so that they stay proportioned when we make them larger. You can also hold down shift when you do this but I just like clicking the button it's a lot easier. So I'm going to make these the size that I want them and then I'm just going to line them up where I want them. I'm just lining them up all three across from each other right between the videos. And then like I said these little yellow lines show up and let you know that everything is um, you know, measured out correctly with the same space in between it all. Now I'm going to add some text and this is going to be my social media name for all these social medias which is the same on everything. I'm going to change the font and the font size and then I'm going to go ahead and just pull that down right underneath the the social icons because on YouTube we're going to add some elements and they're going to go in these blank spaces. So now I'm going to click on the social icons, I'm going to add an effect to them and I just highlighted all three and that way it'll add the effect to all of them at the same time, it's just quicker. So you can go ahead and preview any of these effects and choose the one that you would like. There's the sparkle, the iris, you just kind of pick whichever one you want, lots to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and do the pop effect and then I'm going to click my name and add an effect to that one as well. Just trying a few different ones down here at the bottom. There's so many to choose from. You guys can have a lot of fun with this. Some fireworks. So just go ahead and um, click through all these until you find the one you want. If you click one you don't like it, go ahead and click change and you can go ahead and preview others or just pick one. I like the flip so we're going to go ahead and choose that one. So now I clicked on format. I'm going over to style and under the fill I'm just going to change that to white so there's not a big blue box in the middle. And Your videos are just going to sit right inside that border. Now to change that color I'm clicking on the color wheel and down on the eyedropper. I'm going to make it the same color as my little social icons so everything just matches. All right, now we're going to choose a box and we're going to go to effects again. We're going to choose an effect for these boxes, so go ahead and preview what you like. I like the sparkle, but it doesn't really show up on a white background. If you had a different colored background, it would show up really cool. But I did just want a plain background, so I'm going to go ahead and do the shimmer. And the duration and everything we're going to leave right now. Let's go ahead and do the other box and we want the durations to be the same otherwise one's going to finish sparkling or shimmering before the other. So make the durations the same on both boxes. Okay now we're going to go back into the animate and we're going to click build order and make these happen at the times we want them to. So just mills and dot com are fine. We're going to move the rectangles up above the social icons and let's see we're gonna put the rectangles with after build 2 so it's gonna have to happen after just Mel's and dot com and we want both the rectangles to happen at the same time so here we're previewing it and there are boxes are at the same time 
So I like that. So now I'm going to go down to the icons and we're going to make those happen after build four, which is build five. So the last two are going to be with build five. So now all the icons are going to happen at the same time and justmels.com we're going to happen with it. So let's go ahead and preview that and see what it looks like. Okay, so I like that, but I like the name to show up a little bit after. So we're going to change that and go ahead and preview again. And like I said, this is just trial and error. You're going to play with this until you find the way you like. Okay, now we're going to go up to File, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as a keynote. And um, that way we can go back in and edit anything we need to. If your boxes end up being the wrong size, you're going to want to edit it. So let's make sure to save it. We're going to export it to QuickTime, the same as we did with the intro, at a 1080p. Then I'm going to go ahead and name it Outro and make sure you guys know where you're saving your files so you can find them later. <laughs> now in Final Cut Pro, the same as the intro, I made a project and added my music to it. So this is what it looks like and this is what I will drag into new videos to put like at the end of it for the outro and drag the beginning intro into it makes it super easy now on YouTube this is what it's gonna look like you're gonna go to the end screen and annotations and once you're in here this is where you're going to add elements to that end screen so here you can adjust the time if you don't want the end screen to be 20 seconds you don't have to you can um, make it a little shorter so I'm just kinda of dragging the slider until I want the videos to appear so kind of halfway through the sparkling is when I want the videos to go ahead and pop in. So I'm going to drag that there and we're going to hit add element and we're going to add a video or playlist. I'm using my most recent upload and then you just drag that box right into the outline that we've created and you can drag the little corners to make it a little bit bigger. You just want to kind of position it just right in that border. Then we're going to add another element. I'm going to just choose best for the viewer and that's going to be another video to go in the other box so same thing just drag it over and make it the right size now I'm going to add another element I'm going to add a subscribe button and that's going to go right in the center above the social media icons so they also have snap to um, on YouTube so you can kind of have it make sure it's in the center and all of that so we're gonna put this right in the center and then we'll go ahead and click preview so we can see how it all looks and see my boxes aren't lined up exact so I'm gonna go ahead and go in and fix that just drag it over this was like the most tedious part of the whole thing is trying to get those boxes lined up and actually this is an older file of the outro I hadn't uploaded a new one yet so my boxes are a little bit better now so you don't really see a whole lot of white around the edges of the new boxes that I've made so just kinda click preview and get it perfectly how you guys want it and that's it once you do that then you go ahead and save and that outro will play at the end of that video now I just want to go ahead in here and show you what it looks like, um, the intro and the outro. So I'm just going to play this one for you. So this I have over just a still image in the beginning of the video. And then we'll go ahead and forward to the very end so you can see the outro. Now you could even put the outro over images or videos as well. Alright guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope that I explained this well enough for you guys. I really want to help anybody who's trying to create their intro or their outro. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please leave those down in the comment section. I will get to those and try to help you guys out as much as I can. Like I said, I did watch a tutorial on how to do this and it just didn't explain certain things. So I really tried to explain those in my video and help you guys out. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and it helped out. And I will see you next time.